Hey everyone, it's Tracy here. I want to share something that happened to me in the past and it was super painful. But I think that I really need to share with you because I think a lot of you have, been, have gone through it and, and it sucks. But in hindsight, it actually was one of the greatest gifts that happened to me. And I'll share why I think it's one of the greatest gifts. And maybe you'll learn something from this video in your investing journey. So in today's video, I want to go over the investing approaches based on your investing personality. I also want to go through, if you're really, really thinking about using a financial advisor, key questions to ask your financial advisor. Number three, my three critical reasons why I don't use a financial advisor. Hey everyone, I'm a Canadian investor. I'm a former engineer that now manages a multi-million dollar investment portfolio full time. I love talking about stocks, real estate investing, to build multiple streams of income, to build wealth so that you can live your best life. So if you want to learn more about stocks and real estate investing in Canada, then you must, must, must hit the subscribe button and that bell notification button so you get the latest and greatest videos coming to you every single week. So let's get back with the video. Now, before I jump into investing approaches, I want to talk about what is a financial advisor. So in back in the beginning, you know, back in the day, I didn't know that there were two different types of financial advisors. Predominantly, there is a financial advisor that you can go to your bank typically, and they will help you choose the financial products to invest in, whether it's mutual funds or stocks or they come up with an investment plan, or they can even give you market research. Now, typically how they are getting paid is through a percentage of the products that they sell you. So they might get a commissions, or they get paid through a cut every single year, you pay them a management fee, like one to 2% every single year. Now, there are some rare cases when a financial advisor is fee-based, meaning you are only paying them for a certain service, maybe to build a financial plan or to come up with an estate plan, but it's only for that one product. But typically, most financial advisors get paid through commissions. So when I graduated from engineering, I saved up my first $5,000. And like a lot of people back in the day, I thought, hey, I'll hand it over to a financial advisor, like to, you know, like the ones in the banks who you thought are professionals. So I thought, okay, this professional financial advisor obviously knows what they're doing. So they gave me a bunch of quizzes and found out my risk tolerance and then picked the investment products to invest in. Well, shortly after four years of investing that $5,000, that $5,000 grew to $2,000. Obviously, it didn't grow. So I lost a big chunk of my money. And this was actually not even during a bear market. This was during a bull market, which I couldn't understand how I lost so much money for a short amount of time. That's four years. So I was devastated, so devastated that I lost a lot of my life savings. But it turns out it's actually in disguise one of the greatest gifts that happened to me because I asked why this happened. I try to learn everything about investing. To me, it just didn't make any sense that a professional lost more than $3,000 of my life savings. So to me, I knew I had to take control. And turns out that is one of my mistakes. I didn't know what I was investing in. I didn't even know what the products were. I didn't know where it was invested in. So really, I gave control to a financial advisor who I thought was a professional, but I didn't do my due diligence to figure out if this advisor matched my investing style. Hey everyone, I just want to pause and share a couple awesome resources that I have that I think is going to help you in so many ways to help you build a six or seven figure stock portfolio and build a lifetime of passive income. I have an ultimate guide to dividend growth investing. This is full of actionable tips, no fluff in there, filled with practical advice so that you can start or restart growing your dividend growth portfolio. So be sure to check out the links in the description below. I also have a waiting list for my financial freedom accelerated course and coaching combo. Ooh, last time I shared this, it was sold out. So be sure if you're super interested in building a six or seven figure stock portfolio and a lifetime of passive income, guided by me, personally me, and important things like taxes in Canada. So last time I did this, well, it was sold out. So if you're super interested, please sign up in the waiting list below. 
So you get notified when enrollment opens up. So be sure to hit that link in the description below. Okay, let's get back with the video. So this brings me to the three key reasons why I don't use a financial advisor. Number one, my investing style does not match with the financial advisor. So what I learned losing more than $3,000 of my life savings is that turns out I like having control over my investments. I like knowing what I'm investing in. When I was investing those $5,000 into those financial products, I had no idea that they were invested in emerging markets. They were invested around the world. Some of it was even invested in bonds. And those are all three things that I don't believe in. Some of the pro companies that were invested in were actually poor quality companies, like tobacco companies, which is something that I don't want to even invest in. And turn, most importantly, I found out that investing in these financial products would only return me six to 8% year over year returns before paying the expense fees. Now, if your expense fees range from one to 2% a year, then you're really, you're average return on investment is barely keeping up with inflation. And that to me was just no way. So the investing style did not match what typically financial advisors recommend. So this is what I found out. So you really got to ask yourself, does your personality also align with the products that your financial advisor is recommending to you? Number two, I believe investing should be simple, should be made simple. I believe if you're investing, you should invest in companies that you know, that you believe will grow, grow, grow and make a lot of dough. But did you notice that financial advisors, they seem to overcomplicate the process. I remember back in the day when I was looking at a financial advisor and I invested my $5,000 into these financial products, I lot them, I had no idea what I was investing in. They were mutual funds. Some were invested in emerging markets. Um, they were just overcomplicating the process to the point where it kind of seems like they purposely do that so that you don't invest yourself because it's made to look super complicated when in reality investing should be made super, super simple. I believe investing should be just as simple as possible. Having simple investment plans, invest consistently, invest in companies that you know, in companies that grow, 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 and make a lot of dough, then you don't need a financial advisor to do this. And that's why I don't have a financial advisor. Number three, a lot of financial advisors do not cover brick and mortar assets. So a lot of financial advisors are always just investing in the stock market or in bonds or guarantee investment certificates. Of course, if you're a very conservative investor, they invest in products that seem to be also complicated. Um, part of it's in bonds but they never talk about rental properties. They might talk about real estate investment trusts, which is a, a derivative product of investing in real estate through a trust fund, but you can't invest in rental properties directly. So to me, that is a big no-no because I think in every investment portfolio, it should be very holistic. At the same time, if you find a financial advisor that is very holistic, maybe they cover cryptocurrencies and they cover the stock market, and maybe they might cover real estate, then it kind of becomes a bit sketchy too, because how can a financial advisor know every product that's out there? How can you become an expert on risk management, on the bond market, on the stock market? on cryptocurrency. So you really need to evaluate, are they really an expert in all those products? So for me, because I couldn't trust my financial advisor to cover and be an expert in all these financial products, plus they didn't invest in rental properties, and that's something I want to invest in, this was just simply not aligned to my investing personality. So for me, it comes down to trust. I don't trust my financial advisor. But of course, this is my investing journey, and you may have a different take on your investing journey. So this is why I think a lot of people starting out are gonna go straight to a financial advisor, because it's easy to do, banks offer it and they push on it. And if you decide to go with a financial advisor, I think there are two critical questions that you must absolutely ask your financial advisor to really evaluate, is this financial advisor aligned to you? Number one, ask the financial advisor how they are getting paid. Because really, they should disclose that. Maybe they're getting paid through a cut of the products, or maybe they're getting paid by a service, meaning they give you a financial plan and you pay for a financial plan. But please make sure that you ask, how are they getting paid? Number two is ask them, are they invested in these products personally? And how long have they been investing in these products? And what 
has their performance been? Now, a lot of them you may find out actually, if you pull back the curtain, don't invest in mutual funds. Don't invest in the products that they are recommending to you, which to me is like a big no-no. Every financial advisor, if they really want to talk the talk and walk the walk, they should be investing in the products that they are pushing. I think in the end, investing is a very personal choice and you really need to know yourself and your risk tolerance and whether or not you really want to spend the time learning about investing. And if you don't, it's okay to go to a financial advisor, but please just peel back the curtain and figure out, is this financial advisor really right for you? And if you want a template to a financial plan, I have one below. Check out the link below. It is free. This is the one I use for myself. Hey everyone, I hope you found this video so helpful. I wish I saw this video way back during my investing journey. That's why I created this video for you. So if you found this video helpful anyway, all I ask of you is please smash that like button. Hit it, hit it, hit it. So let's me know to create more of these videos for you. I'll see you in the next video.